Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, when the people of Israel came into the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped in the wilderness. And the Israelites encamped before the mountain. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall say to the house of Jacob, And I tell the sons of Israel, You shall have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession amongst all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Now that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, while we are yet helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Why one will hardly die for a righteous man? Though perhaps for a good man, one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For it, for it while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by earth, by death, to his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we save, shall we be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now reconciled our reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest. He summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits with powers to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first mission of the Lord's chosen apostles is to the harassed and dejected of the people of Israel. Well, why were they uh, harassed and dejected? The law was supposed to help one to live a perfect life, understood as virtuous and happy, flowing from the social order and the personal satisfaction of obeying God's law. But if the law is presented as a kind of obstacle course, which the ordinary person is incapable of handling, then it makes sense that they should become harassed and dejected, harassed by those who reproach them for their breaches of the law, and dejected out of a sense of their moral uh, inadequacy. The challenge here then was that the leadership of the people of Israel struggled to admit that they were in any need of help or that the people needed any help. Where are we this, with this today? It's plausible, it seems to me, that the secular equivalent of being harassed and dejected today is found in the way social media persuades young people, and sometimes they're not so young too, that unless they look and live like certain celebrities or influencers or like their apparently more successful friends, they must be failures. Like the people of Israel in Jesus' time, the impossible standards of the modern scribes and Pharisees can cast us into the ditch of despondency. The constant messages about how wonderful these people's lives are, coupled with the sense of never being able to measure up, can lead some people even to a dejection which is suicidal. Indeed, uh, it seems to me that we can actually find a lot of lost sheep out there in abundance on the internet. And maybe um, the words harassed and dejected need translating for us uh, and our contemporaries, stressed and depressed. Perhaps that resonates more for us today. The Lord's response to the harassed and dejected or the stressed and depressed is instructive, for it's precisely this scene of scattered bewilderment that prompts Jesus to shift the metaphor onto a positive plane and to speak of a rich harvest. The Lord's feeling is a feeling we can sometimes get when we are perhaps overwhelmed by how lost so many people are, and yet at the same time we sense that at a profound level they are longing for the right kind of leadership and spiritual mentoring in which they would find the more abundant life that they are seeking. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, was a man who sought, uh, through the God quest, a way out of his personal ditch of despondency and into a more abundant life. Over the course of a long inner and outer journey, he found what he sought, and he shared what he had found with anyone who was prepared to speak and listen to him, including us today, since we can still read his insights. He developed some really helpful terminology 
to enable people to get in touch with their state of soul. The word desolation he used when a person felt discouraged and downhearted due to a sense of alienation from God. Undoubtedly, this is in the same ballpark as harassed and dejected. He also spoke of the opposite of uh, desolation, calling it consolation, by which he meant the profound peace and joy of a person who is finding their way towards God and whose faith, hope, and love are being strengthened. Obviously, consolation is the opposite of being harassed and dejected or stressed and depressed. It's a feeling of deep serenity and of happiness, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. It is a conviction that, as St. Julian of Norwich puts it, all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. Or as uh, Father Timothy Radcliffe, the Dominican writer, describes it, that sense that everything will be all right. Now, Obviously, because the Lord sends his laborers to the harassed and dejected, this strongly suggests that God who is in Christ is a God who is lovingly concerned with our well-being. He is the physician who comes primarily to the sick. And St. Ignatius concurs in this vision by this simple but extraordinary insight, maintaining that for the Christian who is striving to follow the Master, and to become more like him, the normal state of his or her soul will be that of consolation. This is, it seems to me, an extremely liberating notion, and we should need to be reminded of it often, since we so easily fall into the dejection of believing that God is out to get us, or that the more life is like a veil of tears, the better it is for us. Certainly, we can't avoid the cross, which is rooted in the human condition. But because we are the people of the redeemed, because we are men and women of the resurrection, because the stone of death has been rolled aside, we are invited to a life defined by joy and by consolation. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.